I'm Disproof, welcome to my second and last video for Sample Genie. Today we're going to talk about drums and how to affect them with heavy compression, analog style saturation, distortion and more effects. Of course we're not going to care much about dynamic and mixing rules in general, but we will go for a more creative and fun approach. So I'm going to show you some techniques to achieve big sounding drum loops in minutes. And finally we will arrange a neurofunk drum with the loops we made. To do so we will use addicted drums since I think it's the most famous instrument for drum and bass and then we will switch to old school breaks. So I'll start with uh, addicted drums and I'm gonna write um, a basic drum beat and after that we can start playing around with the effects. So let's go fast. I'm going for a standard drum and bass pattern. Some hats. Some velocity. So the drum will sound a bit more interesting instead of sounding flat, boring and robotic. And I'm putting a, a hat stab on top of the kick drum that usually works really well with heavy compression. Let's put it on the snare as well. And as you can see on this drum kit, I removed um, the reverbs and I also turned down a bit the room levels and uh, overheads as well, because by using heavy compression, we will bring out the reverberated tails, which could result into an interesting sound, but we can try it later after we apply all the effects. Now, as first compression, I will start with the vintage warmer too which is a classic, if you do know it, give it a try. And it's basically a digital simulation of analog style compression, uh, actually multiband, as you can see, we have low and highs. Uh, it can be used as softening and brick wall. And now let's go fully wild on it. What we want now is blending all the drum sound together. And now we can start playing around with more effects. So I'd go for the EQ after the compression. Let's put a spectrum so we can see what we're actually doing. The kick is quite boomy, so as we're gonna apply more compression and more distortion, I will cut it out a bit, like to maybe 70 or 60 hertz. We boost around 70. And don't forget that we're gonna use these samples as layers, so we don't really need the low end because we're probably going to layer another kick drum on top of it later. And now after the EQ, um, I would put a transient modulator as a limiter. So under percent ratio. We got nice transients already. And now, of course, distortion. Mm, let's try the classical camel fat. 
um, I would go for um, a match and maybe some tube and we don't care if it's sounding already um, too distorted or too compressed because that's what we want let's check the headroom As you can see, we almost have no headroom left. But as I say, we don't really care. So drum is sounding pretty cool already. Um, I would just use one channel, so we didn't have to uh, root all the instruments or EQ them, sample them, and blah, blah, blah. But now to make it even better, what I like to do is um, uh, putting a gate before or after the distortion, depends on the dynamic and cut off all the tails that we got with the heavy compression. In this way, we're going to make it sounding super fast and funky. Um, and we're going to use my favorite gate, which is the one in the CLA drum. Um, let's put it before the compression with the art option and the room preset. Uh, let's see what happens. Super effective and clean, as you can hear. Sounding much more cleaner and cooler. Uh, I think we can start assembling it. Drum loop number one. And now we can finally go back to the actual instrument and Maybe you can switch the kick drum, the samples. Uh, we can apply room levels, maybe reverbs. We can pitch stuff and sample more and more material. We can save this version too. And now we can try to pitch up the wall drum using the Ableton stock frequency shifter. Let's try from 10 to 30 hertz. And as we have a lot of compression and distortion going on, if I would remove the gate effect, the drum would probably sound uh, messy and noisy. So it definitely makes a huge difference. Then let's say you want your tails back. What we can do, instead of removing the gate, we can apply a transient modulator. I usually go for the Transcend Master by Native Instruments and play around with the sustain knob. I'm gonna crank it up to 100%. Um, we could also try to use it uh, as a limiter and use it as last effect of the chain and see if it makes any difference. More gate. Again, pretty nice. I like the subtle white noise on top of the drum. Super random, but could be interesting for later. 
And as a really last thing with the key drums, I try to apply a different distortion. I love the tape saturation. Assemble this version too. And now we can try to start playing around with old school breaks and they slightly different FA chain. Uh, so we're gonna go for different compression, distortion, etc. 